The problem isn't that you get into scarcity, you get into fear, you end up spiraling, you have meltdowns. That's what most people think that the issue is. If I didn't get like this, if I didn't overthink, if I didn't overanalyze, if I didn't have so much anxiety, then I would have more abundance. Then I would be able to have more success. My manifestations would come to me faster. No, all this means is that you're an actual, normal, passionate human being. The issue is that you don't have tools and you don't have a go-to plan in place that's simple in order to escape the scarcity spiral as quickly as possible and return to the abundance zone. And that is what I'm going to teach you today. What up, my people, my posse, my fellow crazies? It's your host, Tiffany Carter, and this is the show that is going to help you grow your business, your bank account, that big, beautiful brain of yours, your abundance, your relationships, and everything in between. Now, I do not know what to say to you if you are not signed up and have your seat secured for three days to make bank online in your business. This is once a year. And when I say it reaches maximum capacity every year, I really mean it. This is not some theatrical thing where I'm spending $50,000 hosting thousands of people on Zoom. In order for me to make this free, I have to limit the number of seats. Again, it's only once a year. This is not some circle talk webinar. I think you know that if you're already listening to me here, you know that's not my style. And yes, on there, I do talk about my signature program, but besides all of that, you will walk away with clear and concrete things for you to focus on that will make you coin. Plus there's $15,000 in prizes. Like who does that? It's my favorite thing to do every year. So all you need to do is go to projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash make bank. You can swipe up. It's in the show notes. It's also in the description here on YouTube and share it with whoever you want to share it with. And you will see on the page if it's reached max capacity and then you won't be able to get in. It's not like there's a special exception that I can make for you. The replays will be available for 48 hours each day to accommodate people who have jobby jobs people who live in Zimbabwe, people live in Australia, there's no perfect time to go live. I can't accommodate everyone. So you will be able to watch the replays, but I highly suggest you prioritize going live. The other quick thing I want to say to you is this, my Project Me Posse business coaching membership, it is rare that I have new member spots open because people don't leave the posse. And you'll see why once you're in there. And we have seven spots as of me checking before this episode. I've added an annual option, which is crazy. It's like basically $2. You end up being in the posse for $2 a day. These are weekly live trainings from me. Incredible portal of everything that you need to take a business from zero to $15,000 a month online And it works for any type of industry, whether you're a health practitioner, whether you have a product-based business, whether you're a coach, whether you're a realtor, this is what you will learn inside of there. All the details are on the page and that's projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash projectmeposse. That is also in the show notes as well in the description on YouTube. And same thing with that page. Once those spots are gone, the page will say full, like won't let you join, even if you're trying to pay me. I keep it capped at an intimate size so that I can in integrity say it is a group coaching membership. So let's get into it today because I know your ass is spiraling. I am actually doing something kind of cool right now. And I am go I'm live right now on TikTok while I'm recording this. I got this divine download while eating a salad at my favorite salad place, my salad place with the, uh, for the $40 salad with the pistachio dressing. It's like, I would have never eaten a $40 salad in my life, but it really brings me great joy. And I just got this such a strong ping and I don't go live on TikTok, So it's very unusual. And I was like, this is weird, but I know to trust these things. And I knew I needed to record this tonight. And then I came on TikTok and the wonderful people of TikTok reminded me 
that it's a new moon tonight. I think you guys said it's in Aquarius. And I was like, well, A, that's why I didn't sleep last night. And B, this must be why. This must be why I'm doing a double dipper here. And I always make sure when I record these episodes that I prime myself. This is so that you get the genuine um, best of me at any given time. And it's also so that you can borrow from that abundant energy, right? You can feel the energy right now as you're listening through your earbuds, through the screen you're watching on YouTube. You can, I know you can feel that and it's because it's not bullshit. It's genuine, but I have to like prime myself because listen, it can be a shit show over here, you know, and I, I feel I need to share this. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm going for it. And I of course feel really vulnerable sharing it, but I have a feeling that a lot of you can relate. And because we've got the new moon energy and we all know, um, not that I'm like an astrology person, but we know that's a time for releasing and then also allowing new to come in. <clears throat> There's something that you have to do in life if you want to have great success, whether that is in your relationship side of your life, whether that's in money, whether that is in health. And it's just the reality and you might not like it, but it is what it is. And there's no work around. I love how my phone keeps falling. My phone literally keeps falling because I have no proper, <laughs> I have no proper thing to hold it. <laughs> Even though I do, I own like 87 tripods and all sorts of things. And do you think I use anything other than a candle? I use a giant adult sippy cup. I use books <laughs> and apparently my 2013 MacBook. Thank you so much. So we have to let go of things and set energetic boundaries around people, places, and things that are robbing us of our energy. And part of why you're in a spiral right now or you're in a scarcity energy is you have an energy leakage. And the energy leakage, meaning you're giving more than you're receiving. And it's not saying like, oh, we keep a tally, right? Oh, this person's done this for me. No, no it's like you just know you feel depleted after talking to someone, maybe of an energy vampire, maybe someone who's a wonderful person has turned into an energy vampire, right? Like it, it doesn't mean these people are necessarily bad. They could have an addiction. They have other shit going on. Maybe it's coming up with a job or a client where it's time to release them. It could be an employee. It could be a contract worker. It could be um, a situation. It could be a family member. Anything that is distracting you from the abundance and the things that you are wanting to manifest, if you do not set a boundary around this person, place, or thing, you will not have your manifestation come to fruition. And I know you don't like hearing that because you're probably thinking right now, as I'm saying it, you know exactly the thing that you need to release. And it's scary as hell. If it wasn't scary, you would already have done it. If it wasn't uncomfortable, if it, if you weren't afraid of upsetting the family, if you weren't afraid of that person being upset, if you weren't afraid of being alone, if you weren't afraid of your new business not working, if you weren't afraid of not having enough money, if you weren't afraid, of, then you would have already done it. It's the ones that are harder to do are the ones that are essential for you to do. And this doesn't mean you have to tell someone and necessarily put them on notice I recently just set a very strong energetic boundary with a friend of mine. And this is a wonderful person. This is someone who is not even aware. Ugh. This is someone who's not even aware of how selfish and how much of an energy vampire and how painful they're being. And 
they're not in a particular state where I feel it's even worth my energy and time to bring this up to them because other things have been brought up and then they just do it again. You know what I'm saying? I know you know what I'm saying. And you can tell someone something one time in a very kind, loving, direct and clear way. But any more than one time is managing and manipulating or mothering on your part. The three M's not hot in a relationship and no one really wants to be managed, manipulated or mothered in a friendship, in a job, any of that anyway. I don't know about you. I feel this is more common with women. I'm not saying men don't do this too where we repeat ourselves like we're psychopaths and I catch myself doing it. It's like we repeat ourselves and tell me live when you're watching here on YouTube as well, like comment below. I go back and read all these comments on YouTube and it also like helps ingrain the messages in the episode for especially those of you who are like neurodivergent easily distracted so I I just want you to know I do read them I just can only reply to so many and I'm not having some fucking bot app reply to you guys okay because you don't deserve that that's not happening yeah it is it is so annoying when I hear myself where I'm like, if I just explain it this way to this person, if I come at it from this angle, you know, maybe if they see how upset I am, maybe if they see me cry, maybe if I give them more examples, maybe if I write them a letter, maybe. If, and it's like, oh my God, look at how much time and energy you just gave away to a situation that is likely not going to change because we can't control what other people do anyway. And all of that time and energy could have been spent on you focusing on building your dream life, on building your business, on working on your money blocks, on focusing on your health and your well-being and your joy. And we give it away constantly and cause pure insanity. So this person, I already have had the conversation once. And again, this doesn't mean it has to be a bad person, but it's still unacceptable behavior. And it's, I'm not tolerating that in my life. That's my boundary. That doesn't feel good to me at all. Period. End of story. And it can feel really lonely. It can feel really lonely when you have to set boundaries with people that you love, you know, and I'm not trying to like have a pity party here, you know, but I only have one living relative, my mom, who I'm no contact with, the narcissist. So my friends are my family. So when I have to do this, it is really hard because I have to be willing to sit in some loneliness, which an aloneness, which Ultimately, none of us are alone. And I know that, but it's so uncomfortable. It's the dirty diaper. And that's why a lot of you aren't doing it. You're not letting go of the job. You're not letting go of your resistance of starting the business or growing the business. You're not letting go of the procrastination behaviors and the self-doubt cycle. You're not letting go of these things because you, you're, you're avoiding the potential pain of and the discomfort of sitting in the dirty diaper sitting in the middle but if you're not willing to sit in that middle ground you will not manifest the things that you want into reality whether it's love whether it's money whether it's a business whether it's your health i i promise you it will not happen i've coached more than 150,000 people worldwide i've been studying law of attraction and manifestation and implementing and practicing these things for a very long time. This is the raw truth you need to hear. I'm not going to give you some line of shit that's just going to feel good to you because it won't work. And that would be me enabling you. And we're not about that. So the first order of business is let's acknowledge with love to ourselves. Okay. This is likely why I'm in a scarcity spiral right now. I'm in fear right now. This is likely why I'm in it. And you might go, Tiffany, I don't know why I'm in it. That's okay. You don't have to know right now. You can ask the universe. You can ask God, like, could you please enlighten me and let me know why, 
you know, you can, you can do that. You don't have to fucking know why we get stuck in why that's another thing that wastes a ton of our time and energy. Why, 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 why did this person do that? Why are they doing this? Why don't they care? Why, why don't they see how much this is hurting me? Why do I do this? Why did that? God, it burns so much mental bandwidth and all of that could be bottled up and laser focused on you creating a life that feels so free and so amazing. And if I wasn't a good steward of my fucks, I would not be able to have what I have today, continue to grow it, and certainly maintain it. You have to protect our peace. So acknowledge I'm in fear right now, right? We want to honor our feelings. So I'm going to do it with you, okay? I'm in fear right now. That I'm going to be like totally alone. Because I seem to attract a lot of friendships where the people disappoint me. Where it's not reciprocal. Where I'm definitely like my side of the street's very clean. I'm not perfect, right? But like I show up. I'm thoughtful, I care, I'm loyal, probably to a fault. And it's not, it's not always met. I'm not saying everyone. I, I have people in my life who do that. But the fear is not rational, right? So the fear is saying, like, my, you know, I don't want to be alone. I don't have a fucking family. My higher self knows I'm not alone, and that's not gonna happen. But we're talking about the fear. So I want you to acknowledge what, what are you fearing right now? Like go as deep as you can with it. Okay. In a loving way. And the next thing we got to do is we have to admit something to ourselves. We have to own our part. We have to take accountability. There's a major problem going on in the world right now with a lack of accountability in all areas. And it's, terrible and i've no idea how we got here it, it's really bad and the accountability does not mean self-blame okay like this doesn't mean take a bat out and beat yourself with it which i i can tend to do at times accountability is saying taking an inventory of yourself and going what's my part in this how did i contribute to my own pain here was it that I'm holding on too long out of my own fear? Is it that I have blown off and um, procrastinated and deprioritized really doing work about my relationship with money and clearing my money wounds? And I've avoided investing in my business. I've avoided doing all these things. I know a lot of you have bought my landmark money course, Make More Work Less, which is all of this stuff designed to get to the root of your core money wounds subconsciously shit you don't even realize is there uproot them and heal them in seven days or less but i was talking in my posse membership today in a live training and several people admitted i got to like the first three pages and the first module and some stuff came up and i was crying and then now i've just been avoiding it someone has it sitting like on their coffee table and they're like i know i need to do it but i'm resisting it those things you're resisting doing are the things that you are supposed to do you want to know why the clients aren't coming in why the sales aren't coming in why the cash isn't coming in why the love of your life isn't coming in, why the support you want isn't coming in, why everything feels so hard, why you feel like you're doing all the things and getting very little in return, you have to admit the stuff that you've been avoiding. That's the stuff where I'm talking about accountability and not self-blame, just owning it, right? So I will own my part in that I waited a little too long in this particular situation I shared with you to set this level of a boundary. Because I didn't want to sit in the loneliness. 
of not having this person. I was willing to take, like, accept the crumbs they were giving me a lot of times. Even though I deserve the whole loaf. And I was like, the crumbs were better than me, me sitting without having any of it. And that's, I have to admit that. And it's okay. And it's understandable why I did that, but we've got to admit it. So what are you admitting to yourself? Just admit that right now and not be mean. Okay. It's okay. You're afraid of seeing something. Money's a powerful energy. You're afraid of, of opening Pandora's box. And I'm not talking like we got to pull up the weeds of your, um, if you hadn't like abuse in your past and like heavy trauma, I'm not a therapist. Okay. I'm not saying you've got to uproot all those things in order to heal in this area. But if you're not willing to go deeper to explore these things and work through them, if you're not willing to set the boundaries, if you're not willing to detach, if you're not willing to sit in the dirty diaper for any period of time before the new, fresh, amazing people come in, sit in the uncomfortable period where no one is buying and your views suck and you feel like no one's reading your emails and no one's liking your stuff. And if you're not willing to keep showing up until it works and in a space of gratitude and in a space of service and in a space of surrender and practice building your faith muscle and knowing it works and acknowledging it's uncomfortable and admitting that you don't like the discomfort and you want to get out of discomfort. We have a we have an, another issue, aside from a lack of accountability in society, of people having an atrophied muscle when it comes to discomfort. I, I There's a lot of theories of how this happened. The blessing that I do have of growing up in a highly abusive environment is I know what discomfort is. And I know how to get through it. And I will be willing to sit in it. I don't always catch myself. But I know what's on the other side. And that requires faith until you've done it. Because you don't. You might not have an evidence bank of what's on the other side, right? Like, you don't have proof. You can use me as proof. Because I wouldn't bullshit you on this. It can be gut-wrenching painful. But what's your other option? To continue fucking around? And we're in, what are we in? Mid-February now? How did that happen? Right? Like pretty soon it will be June. And keep fucking around and still not having any results. And then you're going to be really mad at yourself. The next thing I want you to do to get out of this spare scarcity spiral and enter, re-enter the abundance zone. And that's my name for it. No one is in this abundance zone 24 seven. Anyone who says they are is lying. It's not possible. We're not wired that way. It's just about being able to shift back in it and stay in it as long as possible. And that's action. These are my, th these are the three A's. Okay. And taking action. Action is not willing, wishing, hoping, dreaming. Someone will change. Circumstances will change magically the money will come in magically the clients will come in if i see one more comment i get this a lot on tiktok i'm manifesting winning the lotto no not approved by me that's not an action what action you have no action in that game you have no skin in the game other than buying a ticket that's like gambling you can play with that if it's fun once in a while, but that can't be your only move, man. Where's the skin in the game? Where's the action? Where's the accountability in it where you're saying, I'm going to take proper actions that will end up getting me proper results? Where's that? Not this if this person quit drinking if this person could just see the light if this person would just understand um if my company would do this if i would just go viral like 
going viral is not a profitable business plan. If you want to know what a simple, straightforward, profitable business plan is in order to have online income streams coming in, whether you're starting from scratch or have an established business, then grab your seat to three days to make bank. You want to accelerate that, grab one of those few remaining spots in my posse membership. Like I just taught today in there, micro offers to make macro cash. This does not require a bunch of technology. It is very simple, a way for people to pay you and an offer that helps people with a very specific thing that they desire. That's sitting in the portal for you. There is no excuse not to take action to get what you want. You don't like your monetary situation. L listen, if my ass was broke, and I used to make $17,000 a year, okay? If my ass was broke and I saw someone like me who I knew was going to give it to me straight, wasn't going to waste my time and who I felt comfortable with and who I trusted, I would find something to sell in my house. I would find some kind of service. I would walk dogs. I would do something to get the money at the very least to get into the posse. And I would show up and I would prioritize. And even if I couldn't make the weekly live trainings, I would watch the replays. I would go leverage that entire membership library. You get a new bonus that I put in there that I'm not going to keep it in there much longer. I'm going to make it only available for annual members. So this is your last shot at this, but it's my nail your niche workshop. That's $697 by itself. And you're getting that for coming in there. I would do that. And then I, but that's not enough of an action. Listening to a podcast, reading a book, signing up, attending one of my trainings, excellent start. Okay. That would be like me showing up at the gym with the gym outfit. I drove there. I've got the water. I'm caffeinated. I even have a good attitude and not doing one damn thing when I'm there. Or maybe just a light walk on the treadmill. And then I'm pissed that I'm not getting results. And then I'm hoping that I'm things are going to change. I'm wishing to be able to have the freedom and the cash to do what I want and do things on my time and be able to do something that I love helping a lot of people. But I'm like walking at a very slow speed on the treadmill, not breaking a sweat, wondering why I'm puffy. That's what you're doing. A lot of you are doing in some area of your life, romantic relationships, job, career, money. So we need to, we need to reclaim and take accountability. What are actions? What are actions that you're committing to taking? It's either it's general. You need to be generating money, not saving money. We need to be generating money. Yeah. You can save if you're like ordering takeout all the time. If you're getting your nails done, your brows done, I don't want to strip you down of things that make you feel good about yourself, but that doesn't mean temporarily you couldn't do DIY shit and find the money, you know, in order to change your life. Are you going to set the energetic boundary with your sister? Are you going to detach with love from the person who's hurting you and just not be as accessible or available? And you don't even have to tell them why especially if they, if you know, they can't really hear you. Are you going to stop listening to that annoying person at your job? Are you going to write a type out your two week notice, even if you don't submit it yet, but you're going to have it typed out, so printed, sign it and, you know, commit to a date that you're going to do it and start a side hustle. Are you going to launch the damn podcast? Are you going to join the posse? What are your actions? And I want to know specifically like what that follow through is. And if you're watching on YouTube, please put, put it in the comments because that'll help keep you accountable by actually typing those in there. And it's interesting what happens when you see that reflected, whether you're like writing it in a journal, but some of you are more like typers than journalers. It's important to see that. And then I want you to surrender this. I even feel lighter that I shared this with you guys. It's going to be okay, but it, it will be uncomfortable. You will have discomfort. 
but you're going to build your discomfort muscle. It's going to be okay. If you want what you say you want, are you willing to be temporarily uncomfortable, temporarily lonely, temporarily not making that much money, temporarily scared, temporarily uncertain, temporarily um, working harder and longer hours? Are you willing to be temporarily maybe inconvenienced, uncomfortable, have to do a little more in order to have what you want? And if you're not, either A, it might not be that important to you, which that means you can let that thing go, or B, you're in a spiritual entitlement. You're wanting what you say you want, and you're not willing to do your part. Would that really work in any relationship in your physical life? You know, in a marriage, you want what you say you want, but people aren't putting in the work. Would, how would that end? So how do you think that's working with God, with the universe? Oh, she's like slacking, barely doing much and expecting us to do the rest. Mm -mm, it doesn't work like that. I, I know it would be nice if it did. It doesn't. I want you to show up for yourselves and want to show up for yourself. But that also means doing really wildly uncomfortable and hard things. And you heard this for a reason. And I hope you feel some sense of relief. You might still be scared. You might still be like, ah, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I have to do it. You know what burns the most energy and causes the most health issues and causes the anxiety and the depression, the exhaustion, staying in the middle, staying in the purgatory where you're wanting something, but you're not willing to release something. I want to be on the ground, but I'm not going to let go of that damn branch. That's exhausting. That is why you are in a spiral, in a depression. Let go. Try something different. And that's where that expression, right? Let go, let God. You're not really in charge. I know you think you are. I know you've been let, let down by people. You may have even been let down spiritually before or feel that you have. If you're not willing to let go of what is not serving you anymore, there's no way if you don't let go of the branch, you're going to reach the ground. It's not possible. And continuing to try to do so, you're going to continue to cause more and more pain and rebel, repel more and more abundance. And I don't want to see that on my watch. You've got this. I get it. And claim it for today. Claim it right now. You don't have to do 500 things. Just one thing. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you so much.